For the second lecture this week, we will be discussing the unwanted horse and how that's a major welfare um, issue within the equine industry today. Um, horses that are no longer wanted by their owners have been sold or discarded throughout history. However, it is only in the last few, fear, last few years um, that this group of the horse population has been designated as unwanted. Um, to many individuals, the horse is a symbol of beauty, grace, and the American West. It is a cultural icon throughout many countries of the world, but especially in the United States. Um, a study of American attitudes towards the horse in 1980 found the horse to be one of the top three most beloved animals, as this perception of the horse has greatly complicated the unwanted horse issue and the discussion of end-of-life decisions for horses. Um, adding to the uniqueness of the unwanted horse um, debate is the fact that the horse industry tends to classify horses as livestock, whereas the public tends to classify the horse as a companion animal. So that's going to further um, complicate the issue in making decisions um, as to what happens to the unwanted horse um, long term. We couldn't talk about the unwanted um, horse without relating it um, to the connection of the closing of slaughter facilities um, in the U.S. and how how the history has changed and how these trends over time um, have influenced the horse population. The United States horse population numbers increased um, gradually from their introduction um, into North America, peaking in 1910 at 19.8 million head. Um, that number decreased dramatically with the start of the industrial mass production of motorized vehicles and reached an all-time low of 1.6 million head in 1974. Um, because most horses no longer had value as work animals and the interest in horses as recreational animals had not yet surfaced, the horse surplus reduction occurred at hundreds of horses processing plants across the country where they were processed into either dog food or fertilizer. So I know um, when I was younger, you you have a bad pony and, you know, people make comments about, oh, it's going to be dog food one day, you know, it's not a quality animal. Um, we don't do that currently, but that's kind of where that comparison comes from, as it used to when these horses went to these processing facilities. Um, they were going into dog food and they were going into fertilizer. Um, later, as the number of surplus horses dwindled and pet food manufacturers turned to cast off products from beef and hog processing plants, the number of horse processing plants dwindled to very, very few. As these events were occurring in the United States um, post-World War II, European populations were being encouraged to eat horse meat, which was considered lean and a good source of iron. The result was the development of a U.S. horse meat export market where they were sending it to European countries for human consumption. Um, Today, over 1 billion, or 16% of the world's population, consumes horse meat. Um, according to the Statistics and Data Development Unit of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the total production of horse meat for human consumption worldwide in 2007 was 1 million tons, roughly 5 million horses that were being processed. This is an increase in consumption of 27.6 percent since 1960. The top five leading horse meat producing countries in 2007 were China, um, Mexico, Mongolia, and Argentina. The English-speaking countries such as the UK and the US do not tend to consume horse meat, yet often export horse meat to um, other countries that do consume horse meat as a form of protein source. So a lot of this comes down to um, culture and what is accepted culturally. When addressing the unwanted horse problem, the issue of processing horses for human consumption has polarized the horse industry. This may be due to the change in modern American culture 
which is two to three generations removed from the ranch or the farm, toward animal advocacy and away from viewing animals as a food or labor source. However, that coupled with increased cost in boarding, farriery, um, hay, fuel, and other veterinarian services is making it more challenging to keep a horse um, until their natural death occurs. When age, physical disability, or other behavioral issues decrease the horse's value below a certain point, it often ends up um, at a slaughter facility or other um, undesirable results. And therefore, the issues of unwanted horses and the horse process for meat cannot be separated as the horse is sent to slaughter um, epitomizes the unwanted horse. Until the uh, BSE outbreak in Europe in 2000 and the foot and mouth disease epidemic that occurred in the UK in 2001, Americans, both the horse owning and the non horse owning public, were not aware that horses were being processed in the U.S. and their meat was being shipped to Europe. However, both disease outbreaks were responsible for changing many European consumers' preferences from beef to horse meat. This change drew American media attention to the fact that horses were being processed in the United States and their meat exported to Europe for human consumption. Uh, media coverage of the issue drew the attention of not only the horse-owning public, but also equine breed associations, animal rights, and animal welfare organizations, as well as veterinary associations and the non-horse-owning public. As a result, um, this focused lobbying efforts, federal legislation was introduced in Congress to prohibit processing of horses in the U.S. for human consumption. Um, knowledge that horses sent to sale barns or sold to horse dealers were being processed for horse meat fostered the realization there was truly an unwanted horse issue in the United States that must be addressed um, in a timely manner. The welfare of horses has been an issue in North America since 1641 when the Massachusetts Bay Colony included horses in legislation prohibiting cruelty to animals. However, it was not until 2005 that the term unwanted horse was first coined by the American Association of Equine Practitioners. Um, unwanted horses are those that no longer are wanted by their current owner because they are old, injured, sick, unmanageable, or fail to meet their owner's expectations. Generally, these are horses that are geriatric, incurably lame, have behavioral problems, or are dangerous. They may also include unadop unadoptable feral horses and horses that fail to meet their owner's expectations for a variety of reasons. This can include horses that are unmarketable, unattractive, not athletic, unmanageable, have no color, are the wrong color, or cost too much to maintain. Um, in looking at that, I think it is rather unique um, that the horses you know, can end up being unwanted because they have no color or they are the wrong color. Um, ultimately, color is not going to determine the athletic ability, the temperament, or how that horse performs. So I think that um, that is rather unique that that's a factor um, that many horse owners consider. And if you look at the way horses are marketed, I mean, sometimes the different breeding that occurs, a lot of times, you have producers that are breeding for color, individuals that color is a characteristic that they're picky when they're selecting a horse. Um, so I find that unique since that doesn't determine the athletic ability, um, temperament, or how that horse is going to perform in the future. Um, normal healthy horses of varying ages and breeds may also become unwanted. In many cases, these animals have had multiple owners, have been shipped from one sale barn stable or farm to another, and have ultimately been rejected time and time again. In mentioning the unadoptable feral horses, approximately 21,000 unadoptable feral horses were kept in the Bureau of Land Management also referred to as the BLM, funded long-term sanctuaries, and about 9,000 feral horses were in the BLM pipeline or adoption pipeline, and an undetermined number of unwanted horses were potentially abandoned, neglected, or abused 
um, according to a 2007 study. Um, nationally, the BLM's goal is to remove roughly 4,000 horses from the wild each year. Um, since 1971, 235,000 wild horses and burros have been removed from federal lands and adopted by the public. Um, animals that are over 10 years of age when captured or have been put up for adoption three times and not adopted are placed in long-term BLM-funded refugees where they live out the rest of their lives, which can be from 10 to 25 years depending on the age at which they enter. In 2007, the BLM spent $21.9 million to support wild horses and burros kept in short- and long-term holding facilities. That is well over half of the BLM's 2007 fiscal budget of $38.8 million. Because feral horses have few predators, the herds double in size every four years unless animals are captured and removed. So that is why the need for the BLM um, was set up initially. The increased cost of capturing and maintaining feral horses under the current system will inevitably cause the BLM to face difficult choices and future management of the West's wild horse and burrow programs and contribute to the unwanted horse problem. Initially, there was a debate in the horse industry on what type of horses were primarily represented and who was responsible for creating the um, sufficient number of unwanted horses in the United States. Um, however, the USDA um, export records on U.S. horses shipped to Canada or Canadian processing plants in 2002 to 2005 revealed that um, based upon sex, 42.8% were gildings, 52.1% were mares, 13, excuse me, 3.41% were stallions, and then gender was not recorded on another 1.7%. Um, in addition, when we are considering the discipline, the type or style of horse, 70% were Western type horses, 11% were English or thoroughbred type horses, 3.6% were draft type horses, and the rest included various breeds or types of horses or mules. Observational studies were conducted in 2001 that revealed riding horses make up 74% of horses processed for meat as opposed to draft or other types of horses. In general, these types of horses reflect the demographics of the U.S. horse population with no specific type or breed of horse standing out um, as the primary unwanted horse. Therefore, the entire horse industry, all breeds and all disciplines, are responsible for the problem and must work together to find a solution. Over the past 10 years, an average to 1-2% to of the 9.2 million head of domesticated equine population in the United States has been deemed unwanted and sent to processing plants. That number is drawn down dramatically from 33,900 horses processed in 1990. The question to be answered then is why was there an 80% reduction between 1990 and 2007? Was it simply a surplus reduction because of the International Revenue Service tax code changes that occurred in the mid-1980s resulting in people selling off horses because they were no longer um, able to depreciate? Or was there a change in market demand or production? Additionally, it could have been that the horse industry was able to absorb this subset of the equine population through rescue and or retirement facility efforts or by finding alternative careers for them. However, some believe the retirement and or rescue industry absorbed these horses and will therefore be able to absorb today's unwanted horse. It appears the reduction in unwanted horses being processed for meat followed the decrease in the number of horses bred and registered in the mid to 1980s and represented a surplus reduction as many investors left the horse industry when they were no longer able to deduct horse expenses.
In recent years, horse rescue, adoption, and retirement organizations have made a conscious um, and concentrated effort to provide care, funding, or suitable accommodations for unwanted horses in both the private and public sector. The number and capacity of these facilities is rather unknown because they function relatively independently and do not have a national organization. The AAEP estimates that there are roughly 450 not-for-profit rescues and or retirement facilities in the United States that could rescue, retire, or find alternative careers for no more than 6,000 to 10,000 horses per year. Um, the long-term natural lifespan of 25 to 30 years for most horses rescue, adoption, or retirement facilities face a potentially long and costly care period for each horse and have placed funding as the critical limiting factor for those striving to provide an adequate standard of care. In addition, there is a strong need for the formation of a national oversight organization that can inspect and register equine shelters that meet humane husbandry standards in order to prevent animal hoarders um, and horse traders from taking in horses under false pretenses. According to a study conducted um, by North in 2005, the cost to maintain a horse until its natural death averages $2,340 per year. However, the AAEP estimates the cost of maintaining a horse per year at $1,825, not including veterinary or farrier cost. Based upon um, these maintenance figures, the annual maintenance cost for horses kept in rescue facilities rather than sent to processing plants in 2005 would have been $187 to $234 million. This annual cost um, understates the total cost required because unwanted horses that would have been processed in previous years now remain in the horse population where they are joined by unwanted horse um, populations in the years to come. For rescue adoption and or retirement facilities, the financial cost can quickly exceed their capacity or their capability to meet the needs of an ever-increasing number of neglected, abandoned, and unwanted horses. There are a number of current options for horses that are unwanted or no longer considered useful, and some can be retrained for other uses. This is common with racehorses, which often find second careers in dressage or hunter-jumper competitions, or cutting horses, which find second careers in team roping or as pleasure horses. Some are donated to university animal science departments, similar to our program here at Western. Um, others are donated to law enforcement agencies, veterinary and teaching hospitals, or therapeutic riding programs, similar to New Beginnings Therapeutic Riding, um, located in Bowling Green. In addition, unwanted horses can be placed in long-term rescue or retirement facilities or adopted out. Um, as it has been discussed, Many are simply euthanized as the result of their, at the request of their owners or sent to a processing facility um, located in other countries since we're not, um, not currently doing um, horse processing in the U.S. Um, however, there are large numbers of unwanted horses and there is always a concern for their welfare and the reality for many unwanted horses is that they become a burden and are potential candidates for abuse, neglect, or abandonment. And next we will look at euthanasia as an option um, for reading one of an unwanted horse. Um, for those responsible horse owners that do not want to burden others um, with a horse that is old, lame, or no longer useful, the option of euthanasia and carcass disposal is available. The term euthanasia is derived from the Greek terms eu meaning good and thanos mean, meaning death, a good death, occurs with minimal pain at the appropriate time in the horse's life to prevent unnecessary pain and suffering. Traditionally, justification for euthanasia has been based primarily on medical considerations as well as future quality of life issues of the horse. Um, the medical criteria that I will bullet point 
um, was established in 1995 by the AAEP, which we've gone over as the American Association of Equine Practitioners, um, and those are the prime considerations in evaluating the necessity for euthanasia in a horse. So these four different um, considerations are, is the horse's condition chronic, incurable, and resulting in unnecessary pain and suffering? Does the horse's condition present a hopeless prognosis? Is the horse a hazard to itself or its handlers? And finally, will the horse require continuous medications for the relief of pain and suffering for the remainder of its life? So these are um, the four criteria that should be considered when considering euthanasia as an option um, for an equine. Euthanasia at the request of the owner um, because they no longer want or can care for an unwanted horse may become a non-medical reason in the future. According to the American Veterinarian Medical Association's 2000 um, expert panel on euthanasia report, there are three different acceptable forms of euthanasia for the horse. These include an overdose um, of anesthesia, gunshot, and then penetrative um, captive bolts. Sodium pentobarbital is the most commonly used um, product for euthanasia in the horse and when administered intravenously depresses the central nervous system causing a loss of consciousness and deep um, anesthesia progression to respiratory and cardiac arrest. The primary advantages um, are the speed of action and the minimal discomfort that is caused to the animal. The major disadvantages are that the drug requires rapid, rapid intravenous administration, which means the animal may need to be restrained. Um, in addition, prolonged muscular activity, gasping, and vocalization can occur following the drug administration and prior to death, which could be alarming to the owner. Um, also, the carcass is going to contain high levels um, of the drug and must be considered an environmental hazard to wildlife and domestic carnivores. And disposal options are limited. As for the physical methods of euthanasia, um, including gunshot and penetrative captive bolt, when properly applied, both cause trauma to the serbial hemisphere and the brainstem, resulting in an immediate unconsciousness and a painless, um, humane death. When considering gunshot for euthanasia, its mode of action um, is trauma to the cerebral hemisphere and brainstem, resulting in instantaneous brain death. Um, adequate, adequate restraint is important to ensure um, proper placement um, when considering a captive bolt, a non-penetrating captive bolt only stuns the animal and should not be used for euthanasia. The advantages of both gunshot and penetrating captive bolts are that they instantly render the animal unconscious, resulting in immediate brain death. In addition, the carcass is not hazardous to wildlife or domestic animals. However, disadvantages include the fact that they require skill, skill and experience and may be um, displeasing um, for observers. After euthanasia, it's important that the horse's carcass is properly disposed of in a safe manner that does not pose a hazard to people or animals. Um, all states, as well as many counties, um, regulate the disposal of animal carcasses and approve methods vary widely with animal species as well as the regulating authority. As a result, it's important to uh, it's important that the veterinarian or the owner know the specific regulations in their area regarding the disposal of horse carcasses. There are a number of carcass disposal options available, including burial, composting, incineration, rendering, and biodigestion. Burial may be prohibited in 
some areas even on the owner's own land and therefore it's important to check with local authorities on restrictions or guidelines before beginning to bury a dead horse. Um, many states mandate the burial site be at least 100 yards from wells and streams and in states where individual animal burial is, per is permitted, three to four feet of dirt is required to cover the carcass. Um, backhoe services can be costly to bury a horse on the owner's property. Um, and again, these price points are going to vary with the area of the country, um, but are usually going to range from $250 to $500. Um, landfills are a reasonable alternative to burial in some states. Um, but not all landfills will accept horse carcasses, especially those that have been euthanized um, using, um, using a drug or overdose method. Um, costs not including transportation of the carcass to the landfill will vary, but usually range from $80 to $500. So to further look at a couple of these um, carcass disposal methods that we discussed or I listed here. Um, we'll start with looking at rendering. Um, most of these I would assume that we're fairly familiar with um, except for the rendering and the biodigestion um, as these are newer methods, um, slightly unique. So although available in only 50% of the states in the United States, Rendering is an environmentally safe option for horse carcass disposal and involves cooking the carcass to destroy pathogens and produce usable end products such as meat, bone, and blood meal that can be used in animal feeds or fertilizers. fertilizers. Rendering companies will generally pick up euthanized animals and depending upon the state, charge from $40 to $250. Um, some renders will not accept animals euthanized with sodium, um, pentobarbital because they market protein meals to pet food companies. Information um, is available on the location of rendering facilities that will pick up dead livestock. Um, incineration or cremation is one of the most biosecure methods of carcass disposal. However, it is costly um, depending upon, again, the area of the country and the local cost of propane fuel. Um, incineration of an average sized horse costs between $500 to $2,000. Um, a method of carcass disposal that has recently gained popularity is composting, um, which is defined as controlled sanitary aerobic decomposition of organic material by bacteria. Composting is safe and produces an end product that is relatively odorless, spongy, and humus-like substance that can be used for soil supplementation. And then a relatively new method of carcass disposal is biodigestion or tissue digestion. Um, tissue digestion. Biodigesters are giant pressure cooker like machines that use alkaline hydrolysis to solubilize and hydrolyze the animal's carcass rapidly. And they have become popular with veterinarian colleges and industry research um, facilities. They are a less expensive, more environmentally friendly alternative to incineration and can turn a horse carcass into a pathogen-free aqueous solution of small peptides, amino acids, um, sugars, soap, soaps, and powdered bone in as little as six hours. Because the carcass remains are sterile and pose no risk to the environment, they can be taken to the local landfill for um, disposal or be used as fertilizers. And the cost when considering um, biodigestion is about one-third of that of incineration. Throughout the various legislative debates, the AAEP believed that horse processing was... Um, symptomatic of a much larger issue, the number of unwanted horses in the United States. In addition, their growing concern was that the extreme emotion on both sides of the debate over the legislation was driving a wedge between um, key groups within the horse industry and the welfare of unwanted horses was not being addressed. To begin a dialogue to discuss the unwanted horse issue in a context outside of the legislation the AAEP hosted a meeting in Washington, D.C. in the spring of 2005 
to discuss the issue and develop strategies to resolve it. Participants from breed associations, veterinary organizations, um, sport and discipline groups, well welfare and humane groups, and rescue and retirement organizations gathered to discuss the issue of unwanted horses. The conclusions reached during the meeting included confirmation that there is an unwanted horse issue in the United States, but most of the industry was not aware of it. The group agreed that current rescue and retirement facilities were unable to accommodate all of the horses that were currently being euthanized at meat processing plants. They also agreed that there was no large funding sources available and the entire industry would have to take action to resolve the issue. They concluded that selectively decreasing the production of new horses was as important as dealing with um, discarded horses and therefore pre-ownership education and responsible horse ownership was key. As a result of the meeting, the Unwanted Horse Coalition was formed with the state mis stated mission to reduce the number of unwanted horses and improve their welfare through education and the efforts of organizations committed to the health, safety, and responsible care of the horse. The coalition represents a broad alliance of equine organizations that brings together key stakeholders to develop um, consensus on the most effective ways to work to address the issue of America's unwanted horse. Providing a medium for the exchange of information about adoption, proper care, alternative careers, and responsible ownership is key to the coalition's mission. This is presented through a website, printed materials, educational forums, public service announcements, and public presentations. Education of the horse owners about responsible ownership, proper care, and the results of haphazardous breeding are key elements of the initiative. Particular attention is given to educate potential owners on the cost of horse care, proper husbandry, training requirements, and expectations. In addition, information about life-ending decisions and the need to euthanize rather than neglect or sell is provided. So we've talked quite a bit about the AAEP, although there are other organizations that have efforts involved in decreasing unwanted horses in the U.S. and addressing this issue. There are a number of other um, horse organizations working on finding solutions to the unwanted horse issue. I mean, in 2008, the Jockey Club, representing the thoroughbred owners and breeders in North America, introduced a voluntary checkoff program that will assist two organizations that provide post-racing career for thoroughbreds the Thoroughbred Charities of America, and the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation, also referred to as the TCA and the TRF. As an incentive to encourage participation, the Jockey Club will match the checkoff on a dollar-to-dollar -dollar basis up to 200000 in 2009. The checkoff procedures and matching funds are to be distributed to the TCA, which focuses on thoroughbred retraining and adoption initiatives and the TRF, which focuses on retraining of thoroughbreds at correctional facilities. On September of 2008, the American Quarter Horse Association announced plans to institute a greener pastures program to benefit unwanted quarter horses. This is a program that, as a horse owner um, that has a couple of, of registered quarter horses, I wasn't aware um, that was available, so I found this... Um, I found this information very interesting when I came across it in working to prepare this lecture. But the Greener Pastures logo is placed on a horse's registration certificate and signifies that the owner of the horse has requested to be contacted in the event that the horse becomes unwanted or unusable for any um, owners that follow. The original owner then has the option of adopting or buying back the horse. Um, in addition, an exchange forum is being placed on the association's website for the exchange of information on horses to donate and those willing to accept donated horses and members who can help others with extra feed, hay, and tack, as well as other supplies. Um, additionally, a separate category for donated horses that are suitable for therapeutic riding programs has been established. 
and the AQHA Professional Horsemen's Council and Certified Horsemanship Association will evaluate horses for their suitability for donation to therapeutic riding centers. In the event that a horse is not suitable, it will be evaluated by a veterinarian to determine if euthanasia is warranted. Um, unique to Colorado, the Colorado Unwanted Horse Alliance was founded in 2008 and they help to manage unwanted horses in Colorado and has also made an effort to resolve the problem by taking a three-part approach to assess the issue and use online surveys and focus groups to determine problem awareness. Um, source and recommended solutions. Of the respondents, 77% were horse owners, with the remainder coming from the general public or the government. The reoccurring themes most commonly expressed in the focus groups um, were that there is a high awareness of the unwanted horse population and a concern the problem has grown worse within the last two years. So this was from um, a 2008 study. So a little dated now. Um, but, you know, these were their findings and the trends at that time. Um, additionally, they found that the, or additionally, these um, focus groups commonly hit on the point that the source of the problem is the closure of slaughter facilities resulting in abundance of mid to low grade horses coupled with worsening economic conditions. There were mixed emotions about horses being classified as companion animals or livestock. There was concern um, with indiscriminating breeding programs. Um, euthanasia options were seen to be limited and expensive, and the horse rescue facilities as well as sanctuaries were very commonly full. There was a strong agreement among the survey participants that horse owners are responsible for dealing with an animal they no longer want, and not the government nor the horse industry. The top three identified solutions to the unwanted horse issue was one, to educate new owners regarding options and resources during economic crisis and re reduce um, indiscriminating breeding. Number two, to provide options and resources for cost-effective euthanasia. And number three, increase the capacity and credibility for horse rescue facilities. And finally, in conclusion, regarding the unwanted horse issue, um, as a major welfare issue in the United States, is the industry will never be able to completely eliminate unwanted horses. Horses will always age, they will sustain career-ending injuries, and not perform up to the owner expectations or not be attractive enough per se. However, the horse industry has turned its attention to the unwanted horse issue and is developing strategies to reduce the number of unwanted horses both on the front end through responsible breeding as well as on the back end through rescue and retirement facilities, retraining for alternative careers and low-cost euthanasia options. It is the responsibility of all horse owners to learn the facts about the unwanted horse issue and to own responsibly. They must be aware of how their actions affect the welfare of the horses they own and consider the consequences before they breed, buy, or discard a horse at the local sale barn. It is the responsibility of veterinarians to be advocates for health and welfare of the horse and to be a voice of reason on this emotional issue, provide factual information, and educate horse owners on the need for taking lifelong responsibility for their horses. The horse industry must take responsibility for the unwanted horse, develop viable solutions, and educate the non-horse owning public on the facts. The unwanted horse issue will not be resolved overnight. Um, as we've seen, this has been ongoing for a number of years. Um, efforts to reduce the number of unwanted dogs and cats have been underway for decades, yet millions of dogs and cats are still euthanized at animal shelters and veterinarian clinics each year. Um, however, key equine stakeholders are now working together to develop effective strategies to improve the quality of life of unwanted horses and to reduce the number of unwanted horses as a whole. Um, so that will complete our lecture for this week and you will be ready to complete week 8B assignment. Keep in mind that this week 
Um, your assignments will be due on Wednesday at 4 o'clock, so 8A and 8B. However, during our lab time on Wednesday, we will be having our, um, our midterm or our lab, um, our first lab practicum. So make sure that you are reviewing the hands-on information that we covered in lab and be prepared um, for that at 4 o'clock on Wednesday during our lab time.